Welcome to Startup Health TV. This is a COVID-19 health innovation update. And my name is Logan Plaster. I'm the editor-in-chief of Startup Health Magazine. And I'm joined today by Dr. Alexandra Greenhill, CEO and Chief Medical Officer at Care Team. Alexandra, Dr. Greenhill, thanks for joining me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what we're doing with these health innovation updates is we're talking to entrepreneurs in health about how they are reframing, refocusing, sometimes pivoting entirely around COVID-19. Now, I know that Care Team, uh, with Care Team, the name of the game is Care Coordination. And I wanted to start by asking you, since Care Coordination is kind of a buzzword in health innovation, but might not be that well understood by patients, what is it? Why is Care Coordination so important? It's been an interesting journey because in over 20 years of practice, you've seen every wave of new technology come in and it's behind the scenes to patients. And you're right, most people don't understand this, but um, healthcare is very reactive. You show up to an appointment, you make a phone call, and then a series of activities happen. And if you as a patient are on top of things and very diligent, you will do the follow-ups. But all of our systems are not designed to remind us that someone didn't show up for the follow-up test or didn't go and see the specialist or didn't, didn't, wasn't sure what to do mm. and therefore did nothing. Mm. And um, the complexity of it is, unfortunately, some people have multiple health issues. And so what happens is they go see different people in the visit, everything looks clear. They leave the visit and they said, what did they tell me to do? And they remember some of it. Um, and until the next time they come to the office again, we don't know what has happened. Mm. And so we can help our patients with diabetes if they follow a certain path to prevent things like kidney failure. But so many patients end up with some of these severe complications simply because there was no coordination to mm. ensure that they did what we know they should do in order to prevent those things from happening. Now, you are a practicing physician. Uh, what was your specialty again? I was an eMERGE and a family physician, so I've seen sort of the acute care and the pre preventative office-based practice in real life, um, as well as an occupational therapist. So the importance of therapy and understanding what happens to patients uh, beyond those clinical settings. And so it was shocking to me when you go in to someone's home to see how little um, was sometimes understood in some of those medical meetings. And it informed the kind of physician I was um, in, or, in order to do a better job with my patients. Got it. So really care team is trying to create this connecting tissue from the physician to the home and make sure that the discharge instructions, the care plan, it all actually happens. It's supported um, in between visits. Is that right? Absolutely. And there's lots of apps being built with that idea and sort of like, but a single purpose. And they tend to bypass the physicians and the clinicians already involved in the patient care. And okay. our idea was to say, well, no, why don't we give something that every physician, every dietitian, um, and your nurse has an ability to say, this is my recommendation. And by the way, try this other app. And Startup Health has so many innovators that are working so hard to create the kind of tools that are necessary, but they're not plugged in. Okay. And so our analogy has been, if this was an orchestra, everyone uh, is acting with their best intentions, they're well-trained, they're passionate about what they're doing, but they have no idea who the conductor is and what music are they supposed to be playing. So you end up with noise instead of music. Got it. So would you say a differentiator is that you're putting more power in the hands of the, the discharging physician, letting them kind of set some of the terms versus if I'm a patient and I just have a bunch of apps, it sort of coordinates my care, um, but it's not as physician centric? Well, it's not organized. And so in our model, it's the physician and the patient who co-manage this and Got communicate it. much more clearly. And so in the COVID setting, for example, so our tool is already being used in primary and specialty care. So your family doctors and your specialists, but within the context of COVID, you, you're now asked to download a new set of apps and do a whole bunch of new things. And now it's an all-in-one experience. And so when you call your primary physician and you say, I may have symptoms, I want to isolate, but I'm also pregnant, you know, I have a follow-up on my specialist. All of those instructions are put onto the same platform and they may open to another tool like a COVID self-assessment tool that's specialized for that purpose. But everyone understands what's the plan of action for that patient. 
Did this require a, a pivot for care team? How much did you have to restructure what you were working on over the last two months? Oh, um, the team stepped up to this and they expanded what we do. So we can now do some of those public health measures, like broadcast a message across the entire population of patients okay. or trigger a telehealth visit to any provider because different doctors are now using different telehealth tools. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want to limit them to the one that we had set up. And so now you can continue using um, whatever platform you're using, but it, the visit gets triggered through our platform. Got it. Got it. Is there telemedicine natively uh, sewn into care team or do you just link up with other providers? We link up. So I was one of the first sort of um, telehealth creators. We created a platform in 2012 that was direct to patient on any device and uh, no training required. So you could adopt it within uh, three to five minutes. And so um, having seen that world, you realize a video visit is excellent. But any, uh, anyone who watches this and ha is in business, you know that in addition to your conference calls, you need a number of other tools to make sure that your business is productive. Sure. And you need strategic planning and project management. And so none of those things right now exist in medicine, except for in studies that have shown that this works. Mm. So we're trying to take everything that was uh, created as a knowledge base to say pathways, uh, programs, uh, systems work, and bring them into healthcare. And before us, Atul Gawande did it. He took the uh, airplane safety systems and said, we can do a much better job in surgery hmm. if we just followed simple checklists. Okay. And so we're saying, okay, checklist was a good beginning. Why don't we actually bring in the rest of the things that we know could work? So gotcha. project management, progress reports, you know, integrated plans. And so that's what we're doing with Care Team. Got it. Now you, you're located in Vancouver. Uh, your rollout has been primarily or entirely in Canada? For now, we're so, still a young company. And so we have four major health centers across Canada who used us before COVID. In the last two months, we brought in a number of other ones and we're starting to uh, roll out across the US as well. Um, every place we go, um, the, the true test is you talk to physicians and patients about what happens before or after a virtual visit. And they'll tell you, I'm trying to figure out what's my email and how can I send this document? And, and you're like, okay, perfect. There's a use case here for care mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. How has the COVID uh, response, how's your involvement in the COVID response been unique uh, in the Canadian setting? Well, um, I was part of the SARS, so you know I was practicing eMERGE when SARS mm. hit, and so it's really interesting. So first of all, everyone's criticizing people now for not being prepared, and you have no idea how much better prepared we are than back in 2002. Uh, okay. I was pregnant doing eMERGE. We had no masks within four days, and no one knew how to test or do anything, and we got lucky because SARS was not as intense. Mm -hmm. on uh, intensive care use and other things, but we are better prepared. We have mm -hmm. shortages of things, but um, there's a greater collaboration uh, internationally that's happening than I've ever witnessed in my clinical life. Mm -hmm. And so then part of a number of innovation networks where we rapidly talk about what we've done in Canada that can be adopted elsewhere and we learn from other places. And so some of the shocking sort of statistics is Netherlands just published this last week, 30% drop in the diagnosis of cancer in the month of March. And it's not because cancer is not happening. We're just not diagnosing it, which means yeah. we got, we are going to diagnose it, but it's going to be later. Yeah. And so part of our thesis with care team has been to help the Canadian governments and also people elsewhere realize that we have two fights. We have one that is directly on COVID, but the second one is to avoid any mortality or morbidity means people dying or getting sick from a number of other things that are getting neglected because we can't provide care for them. Yeah. And our thesis has been, you know, everyone's scrambling, trying to do their best and adding a number of new tools. And you can end up with, you know, the orchestra analogy. <laughs> There's going to be a jazz band orchestra, like yeah. a jumble of well-intentioned people who run into help, but the chaos is not helpful to anyone. Yeah. Very interesting. Do you see this, um, changing care teams structure in any any fundamental ways uh in terms of sort of a post-pandemic world and um just you know the world has changed in terms of how it sees and adopts digital health solutions has that altered your thinking any 
Well, we've always thought of ourselves as the connector. And so we don't replace everyone else's efforts. We just want to better coordinate and organize everyone else's efforts. And so until now, the status quo had uh, such an entrenchment that people were like, yeah, I know that theoretically I should be doing this. The same way as we know we should be paying attention to social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. And yet we build more emergency rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that sort of a, a permission to not act. Yeah. that was just ubiquitous. And so the thing that has happened in the last month is people went for the obvious, which is put in telehealth access. Mm -hmm. And so now that everyone has telehealth access, they've come to realize what I realized is that's not enough. Yeah. And so it was interesting to see the clinics that we, we approached them initially and they said, we're fine, we just have telehealth, we'll, we'll make it do like this. Yeah. And after about a week or two, they are like, okay, we're getting overwhelmed. Can we now try? <laughs> Yeah. care team and so for us it's been a huge accelerant um, in terms of adoption and we worked really hard to make it super easy to adopt so if a clinic calls us and wants us up and running we can do that in an hour remotely there's wow. no training there's no manuals and sort of you know I've, I've been the victim of so many emr implementations that it takes six months to learn how to use yeah. we really wanted to avoid that and so for us it's been a great opportunity um, but also, you know, my team of engineers has been on fire because they can see you know, their loved ones, their family members have such a dramatically better experience um, because of the clarity of action between appointments. Gotcha. And you just mentioned working with smaller clinics. So I assume care team can be rolled out uh, at a variety of size institutions. Uh, is that true from clinic? Are you also working with hospitals, hospital systems? How does that work? Yeah, we're calling it the cascade of benefits. And so if one clinic adopts this, there's a net benefit for them because the patients arrive better prepared for the appointment mm -hmm. uh, with the exact instructions, the way I as a clinician like them. So if there's a questionnaire that they have to fill out or information they have to provide. So my, my first part of the appointment is shorter. And then um, um, the appointment could be shorter because if they fall into a category, let's take that pregnant patient with COVID symptoms, I can just say, these are the instructions for that type of patient and just send them automatically. And the patient satisfied, but my entire visit was less. Um, but in a department um, system of a large hospital, you get a net benefit. And so like a children's hospital who adopts this, they have kids being treated by different departments. And right now they don't know what the other department is saying, what are the community resources doing? Well, there's a next level of benefit when multiple providers adopt it and you start getting a 360 view of your patient. Gotcha, gotcha. Now this is maybe under the hood, but I assume this integrates with current EMRs versus replaces them. Completely. Um, so we've made huge investments in Epic and Cerner and all scripts. And so it takes uh, years to replace that. We don't want this. I think that this, these systems need to exist to document care in the clinics and the hospitals. What we do really well is uh, leverage that investment and extend it into community between visits and help people understand that they know that they're not the only ones seeing the patient. So who else is seeing the patient and what are they saying? And because of our structure, um, privacy by patient, it means that the EPIC, uh, for example, system doesn't have to sign a BAA with every community provider. The patient could be the common ground that allows the two to share information. And so it simplifies the whole HIPAA environment. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, our time is limited. So final question is, what is your vision for the rest of 2020? Well, um, many predictions, new normal and whatnot. I think we've all come to realize that uh, it's very, um, while it's fun to do video, we do prefer human interaction. And so uh, I see this as a huge jump forward for any tools that uh, provide remote uh, home monitoring, telehealth, care collaboration. We're calling it virtual care collaboration, uh, the next level up from coordination. Um, and so we're going to start using a lot more of that within practice, but we're not going to replace face-to-face -face visits, nor should we. Mm -hmm. And for care team in particular, uh, growth, uh, sort of where do you hope to expand and grow? Well, we've been helping the healthcare system, but you mentioned me uh, being interested in social determinants of health and patient empowerment. Um, we've uh, started working with community groups. And so the Red Cross, the United Way, the home delivery services are right now a pillar of their own. 
but so much of what they do matters. Um, mm. My patients uh, that uh, need support at home, single mothers, aging elderly, people with disability or special diets, um, that connecting them to the healthcare system has been a dream of mine. And right now there's interest in funding to make it possible. So we were gonna work on that. So I'm imagining if I was uh, an elderly patient and I'm at home, I've been discharged, but really what I need is to be connected to something like Meals on Wheels, that that is in one place, that, that I'm being connected from physician to home to food yes. uh, in, in, one, in one coordinated way. And video social visits, or maybe down the road back to in-person social visits and somebody who can clear my snow from the front door so I don't fall next time mm -hmm. I get the mail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a whole bunch of uh, little important daily things that make uh, our experience not just aging at home, but living at home. Yeah. Um, and connect family members who may not live in the same city, but who want and can help. Um, and so it's a, a completely new way of blending real life and uh, the online virtual component. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, I know you've got a lot going on today. So Dr. Greenhill, thank you for taking a few minutes explaining what Care Team's up to. And uh, I wish you, wish you a wonderful and healthy day. Thank you and stay safe.